unique guy. He is. He's not an easy grader, though. Well, yes, that's that is true. <laughs> I've talked to several people. <laughs> All right. Um, so let me ask you this. Um, it's kind of a two-part question. Uh, one, does a religion need a supernatural being, or does it, a religion need to, fix, to be fixated on a supernatural being in order to be called a religion? And is atheism a religion? Yeah, uh, yeah, and this is real important because what both Dawkins and Hitchens, by the way, there's also Sam Harris and Daniel Dennett that I would throw into the, the group of the, the kind of the four horsemen of the new atheism. But um, their premise is that religion uh, is bad and it causes all these problems, but they always exempt themselves from being religious. And um, so the, their idea of religion necessitates belief in God. Well, that's just that's just foolishness. Um, uh, Paul Tillich, uh, a great theologian, not a not an evangelical of any sorts, but he uh, defined religion as one's ultimate concern or our, our ultimate commitment. Whatever it is that makes us tick, yeah. makes us get out of bed in the morning, that's our religion. Uh, the 1961 Turqueso versus Watkins Supreme Court decision, it just basically said that, you know, secular humanism, uh, an atheistic belief system, uh, can be considered as much a religion as theism, uh, because in the, the Supreme Court's ruling, they're not religious experts, but they did a good job, they said, because otherwise we'd have to say that traditional Buddhists are not religious people, because Buddha himself uh, and uh, traditional Buddhism is agnostic towards God's existence. Yeah. So uh, didn't, didn't the original Humanist Manifesto refer to itself as a religion? Yeah, 1933 Humanist Manifesto number one over and over again referred to they referred to themselves as religious humanists. They referred to it as a religion. They said man is incurably, and I quote, man is incurably religious. And then Humanist Manifesto number two in 1973, they they didn't want to use the word religion because now they had already argued that you need to get religion out of the schools, but they still refer to secular humanism as a faith. Yeah. Oh. Um, well, they, they do that, like you said, because then they're going to lose their 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 grip. Yeah. So we would be. So we have these Buddhists who are obviously religious. You know, they'll, they'll you know have this very aesthetic lifestyle and dedicated in all these ways, and they are in a sense atheist and agnostic about about God. And we would definitely define them as religious. We have the original Humanist Manifesto that says secular humanism, which has definitely no belief, not even any agnostic, or maybe some agnosticism about God, definitely religion. So is the new atheist a yeah, religion? New yeah, atheist yeah religion. they are. If, if I were sitting down next to uh, Hitchens or Dawkins, and I said, God exists, Dawkins and Hitchens would say, well, that's a religious statement. But then if they say God does not exist, then that also would have to be a religious statement. Uh, because you don't, you, you don't change subjects by negating yes. an affirmative statement. So they might be saying if baseball is the best sport ever, and, and then you say if baseball is not the best yeah, sport baseball ever. baseball stinks, and then you claim I wasn't talking about baseball. Yeah. <laughs> but no, I, it's... <laughs> so a person's a person's views about about God, about the origin of man, about where he came from, their worldview that they're all, that they're committed to, their ultimate commitment, that is their religion. That's why these guys have so much passion. Um, you know, I, I, I sometimes I think somebody should ask, like for instance, Christopher Hitch, well, even Dawkins as well. If you don't believe God exists, why do you hate him with so much passion? <laughs> you try to you compare him to the flying spaghetti monster. But the flying spaghetti monster doesn't throw you into a tirade. The God of the Bible does. And so if, if you don't see that difference, I think you need to look a little bit closer. And, and not only that, too, but I, I like it how these these iconic men for their cause, such as Dawkins, they almost receive worship from these people. You see how they respond to him. And, you know, how I say, well, I remember one on this forum, I said, well, you know, they were talking about, well, he's at Oxford. And I was like, well, no, he got asked to leave Oxford. And people slammed me for, for saying that. And I was like, but it's, it's true. And all they, all they said was he was asked to, to, to step down. Or, yeah, well, it, 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 it's really a weird way of thinking. When, when uh, atheists at the last debate found out my latest book is titled The Atheist Delusion, some of them were offended. 
that I would call atheism a delusion. <laughs> and it's like, well, wait a minute, one of your guys just called God a delusion. And it's like, but they, I mean, they're, the, the way they think is like, well, he doesn't exist, though. I said, well, no, that's what we're debating about. I believe he exists. Yeah. You don't. That's what we're debating about. If you can take pot shots at Jesus and at God, how come I can't take pot shots at atheists? And, and then, so, so the, the, that's why I, I told the cover artist, Bill Herod, who's one of the, Herod, what a name for, for a Christian who loves the <laughs> Lord. Good friend of mine. But that's why I told him, I said, give me a cover of the Atheist Delusion book. Give me a cover with stained glass window with Charles Darwin and stained glass, and um, and I think he did a, a dynamite job. Yeah, so cover. so if you're looking for the book and there might there's another book that's uh, Atheist Delusions or something like yeah. that that isn't my book. Look for the book with Charles Darwin and stained glass on it. And I don't you can't think, miss it. Yeah. So uh, and and that's pretty much what I'm arguing. That one of my big arguments is that atheism is as much a religion. Um, as uh, as theism or, or Christianity or whatever it may be, okay, so and and so when you're going to blame uh, Christianity for the Crusades, atheism has to take its blame uh, for the old Soviet Union, for Red China, China for Cambodia. You're talking over a hundred million people slaughtered during peacetime by their atheistic regimes. Hitchens and Dawkins, what is their response? Well, no one can prove that they did that because of their atheism. So they did that despite their atheism. It's like, whoa, 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 <laughs> hold on here. You know, I mean, you're going to slam Christians for the Inquisition. I would be on the rack because I don't submit to the Bishop of Rome. I was raised Roman Catholic, but I'm not a Roman Catholic anymore. I don't submit to the Bishop of Rome, so I'd be one of the guys on the rack, yet I'm supposed to take blame for the Inquisition. And I can't say, well, I think that any Christians that did, uh, you know, that persecuted Jews, that's just showing that they're not really Christians, because Jesus said, not everyone who calls me Lord, Lord, unto the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father who's in heaven. Uh, you say, no, you can't do that, but then they can turn around and say, well, those atheists were not my kind <laughs> of atheists, they were a different kind of atheists. That's just not fair. But the hundreds of millions slaughtered uh, in the name of atheism, uh, you could take all the world's religions, world's major religions together, it doesn't even come close to that. And this is just one century of atheism. Now I will say this, you know, I very rarely do I compliment atheists, but I will admit that it's not the most dangerous worldview. The most dangerous worldview is of this worldly pantheism, a pantheism that puts the emphasis on bringing the new age here and now the example of that of the 20th century was the Nazis, yeah. and they killed at a faster rate than uh, atheistic communists, it's just that they had a, a, a shorter lifespan. Well, yeah, and there's, and, there's even and, people here now that say, you know, that Christians should be slaughtered because they don't believe that they're God. Yeah, yeah, and that's like Barbara Marks Hubbard, one of the leading spokespeople for the, uh, the New Age movement and uh, neo-paganism, and... Uh, and so uh, I would admit that that would be even worse uh, than atheists. I mean, the day may come, we may even find some of our atheist opponents siding with. I've had a few conversations with Jeff Louder and Eddie Tabosh, and, uh, uh, and I would not be surprised someday to find us both side by side uh, trying to refute uh, uh, neo paganism. I mean, it's just weird. Weird colleagues to have. I mean, it's kind of the odd couple, but uh, but, um, good but, 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 but but they they yeah. see some of the problems with neo paganism as well. Yeah, I definitely, and you know, like they're they're smart guys, though. we cannot deny that. So definitely would like them on our team. Okay, so premise one, um, what we can concluded is that um, atheism is a religion. Yeah. Uh, however, premise two, as stated by themselves, religion poisons everything. So yeah, by well, their by their own. Yeah, and, and, and I would say, I would the, the, let's just take that uh, the subtitle of uh, Hitchens' book, "Religion Poisons Everything." If he said false religion poisons everything, I would agree with it. But would, the yeah. atheism is one of those false religions, and then I would also add to it that true religion, once it gets into the hands of man. You know, man, anytime man touches something, he's going to pervert it, he's going to twist it. Uh -huh. So, 
you can dig up dirt on Roman Catholicism. You can dig up dirt on Protestantism as well. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, when you look at the Salem witch trials, uh, Dinesh D'Souza points out that there were, there's only 18 documented deaths from it, and there might be a pos possibly another eight who might have, their death might have been due to complications due to the uh, treatment that they received. Um, so, um, at most, you've got like 26 deaths from the Salem witch trials. Yeah, that's all you hear about. Nobody wants to talk about over 100 million people slaughtered in the name of atheistic communism um, in a 70-year uh, period of time. So, um, uh, you know, but whatever the case, I think that you can take true religion and pervert it and twist it yeah. and make it ugly. And, uh, and false religion is already ugly. Um, but there's a big difference between the idea that all men are created equal, and that was the basis for our freedom, um, and the idea that nobody's claiming that all men evolved equally. In fact, uh, uh, Charles Darwin, um, in his work, that everybody talks about origin of species, but in his work, The Descent of Man, um, he basically says that, oh, you know, you'd be foolish. Yeah, you'd be foolish. Any species would be foolish to allow its weaker members to reproduce. And so he argued that uh, we should not, that, you know, we we try to be nice and build asylums and this and that, and, but, um, but we need to prevent the weaker members of the human race um, from reproducing. He also argued that uh, uh, over the next hundred years or so, and so, you know, that didn't happen, but over the next hundred years or so, he thought that the lesser evolved human races would be wiped out by the, the uh, stronger, more evolved races. And it's like, I mean, it, that's got racism written all over it. And uh, so atheists don't like to talk about that aspect of, uh, of Darwin. By the way, Adolf Hitler, he was a neo-pagan, but he did blend with his neo-paganism, uh, uh, social Darwinism, uh, applied Darwinian evolution. Uh, to mankind and wanted to weed out the uh, the subhuman uh, non-Aryans was his way of thinking. So uh, Margaret Sanger here in the United States, the founder of Planned Parenthood, she was really big on social Darwinism and eugenics, eugenics yeah. the good genes movement, and, and wanted to uh, sterilize uh, certain races, and that's how Planned Parenthood got its start. So... Uh, you know, the idea that atheism is going to treat all mankind equally and we're going to live happily ever after, just the idea that human beings have rights and have equal rights, that's a Judeo-Christian idea. That's not a, uh, uh, an atheist idea. It's not a neo-pagan idea. Um, it's not even a Hindu idea. Hinduism gives you the caste system. Um, so, um, you know, whatever the case... Uh, these guys are claiming that Christianity is intolerant. In reality, uh, uh, our whole modern idea of, of true tolerance comes from biblical Christianity. And you do actually dedicate um, your fifth chapter is on the idea of is Christianity intolerant. Mm -hmm. And I know that was actually before uh, I started working for you and I started listening to your sermons. That was one of my favorite sermons was the is Christianity intolerant. Yeah. Definitely check that one out, you guys. It's on Sermon Audio if you haven't heard it yet. So, you know, one of the things that I always I always I hear a lot of, especially very recently, um, even even I remember uh, for those of you who are not listen or not from Washington State out there, you know, like uh, around Christmas time, um, there was a major scene in our state capitol and um, our governor allowed some atheists to put up a sign right next to the major scene that was like... Uh, uh, Dan Barker. It was uh, Dan Barker did that? Yeah, out of was Wisconsin. I think he's from... And I, you know, I debated him back in 2000. And, um, but it was for, for religious displays. And Dan Barker argues that atheism is not a religion, yet he, he set up his own little religious, religious display. display. And, and, all, and all it did was attack. Yeah. What he, said, what he says in there is, is religion is but uh, superstition. And we need to let, during this winter solstice, we need to let reason abound. Um, so I, uh, let me ask you, um, is belief in God 
superstitious. Well, first of all, what, is, what does it mean to be superstitious? What are the characteristics?